What's up guys, welcome back. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt and behind me here, this is my beautiful 1950s Galleon Road Grader that I picked up the other day. In the first video of this grader, I was plagued with nothing but uh, dumb luck, stupidity, and camera troubles, along with mechanical failures. So, if you haven't seen that video, it was a pretty good one. You better go check that out. The link's down in the description. Uh, and also, everybody in that video said since this machine seemed to be cursed, we should probably call it Christine after some Stephen King novel. I don't know. I think it's before my time, but I'll roll with that. There was enough comments that that sounds good to me. If everybody thinks something cursed should be named Christine, Christine it is. So at the end of the last video, old Christine here died right in the middle of my driveway where you see it. And it's been about a week or so since I was out here messing with it. And surprisingly enough, the hydraulics have held up really well. The blade is still about eight inches off the ground. And that's respectable because I've got much newer pieces of equipment that won't stay off the ground that long. They'll drift off and be sitting flat with no pressure in the system. So anyway, we need to work on the carburetor and about 20,000 other things but I need to be able to use my driveway. So the first thing we're gonna do is put some gas in this thing and give you a little cold start right off the bat here. And I'm gonna pull it just down the laneway here so I can get it kind of off the edge where I can still get by it and still work on it pretty easy. Now, if you somehow managed to uh, fend off the temptation to go back and watch that previous video I'm talking about, I still recommend you do it. But this engine uh, actually seems to run really good. It's an international six cylinder gas engine and uh, it had been sitting 10 years whenever I bought this thing and unfortunately due to camera issues I missed up missed the first start of it in 10 years but it basically just fired right up there was really nothing too spectacular about it wasn't quite as cold as it is today though so we'll put some gas in this thing and maybe we can get it fired up this is just a temporary tank that I have rigged up here right now because the our original tank is pretty crusty inside we're gonna have to clean it out pretty good before I can use it carburetor was really varnished up cleaned it out pretty decently but definitely still needs an overhaul I have the rebuild kit so we're gonna pop the carb off and do that here after I get it moved so this is a genuine cold start it's about 23 24 degrees out here today with a slight breeze so I know some of you guys don't think that's that cold but I'm pretty chilly okay you guys ready contact Me thinks I have the choke the wrong way. that thing with no clutch well dearest Christine is out of the way now my driveway's clear let's get that carburetor off of there and go from there so what we got here is an old Holly 1904 I believe it was carburetor I had to look it up uh, I'm 
fairly well versed in old equipment. I really enjoy old equipment, so I uh, I research it a lot. I play with it a lot. And I'd never actually seen a Holley carburetor in there, so that was a first for me. I was kind of surprised to see that, but that means that uh, kits weren't that hard to find for it after I figured out which kind of carburetor it was. There's actually some really neat ones that are very similar to this in design, and this fuel bowl area is actually made of glass, so you can see the float in there and the fuel level and stuff, so that was pretty neat. I think it'd be really awesome if that had one, but we got what we got, and it's not worth changing. So this thing's pretty easy to get off. It looks like uh, two bolts, one linkage, and of course our air boot. So, yeah, looks like it should come right off. Yeah, there's our air boot. So in the last video of the grader, I mentioned I had some camera troubles. I had picked up the new GoPro Hero 9 and uh, was pretty disappointed when I lost a bunch of footage. Uh, all my videos previous to the grader video had been shot on a GoPro Hero 7 Black and I had had good luck with that camera. Uh, but it was pretty well beaten up and abused, so I figured I'd upgrade here while the getting was good. And a lot of people said that they had been hearing bad things about the GoPro Hero 9, to which uh, maybe I didn't do a whole lot of research, but I didn't hear too much bad about it before I decided to buy one. And to their credit, I think we're okay now. I had a good high-speed memory card in it, the type that GoPro recommends. And I don't know what the issue was exactly, but I formatted it with the GoPro rather than my computer, which in theory shouldn't be any different. And uh, so far, knock on wood, I haven't had any more issues with it. This stinking wire is on here. There we go. That's off. There we go. She's a beaut. Now rather than rebuild this thing out here in the woods, I'm gonna take this home. It's a little too cold to be messing around with teeny, teeny parts. My fingers will be froze. So I noticed several comments in the last video too, people asking why the tires were leaning side to side. And some people thought that that had something to do with the direction you're steering. It's not, it's completely separate. Um, on graders, the front tires have that hydraulic cylinder right there and they will lean from side to side to help you stick the turns and cut ground better um, helps you uh, bite into the turn a little bit more and actually I'm no professional grader operator I've only run one a handful of times uh, some of you grader operators out there might know I'm sure there's handy little tricks and stuff you can do using that to help you do other things some of the new fancier graders even articulate in the middle. In fact, that's pretty common on new graders. They articulate uh, right behind the cab and you can kind of crab walk with them. They're pretty impressive what people uh, people can do with them. If you're on Instagram, check out the uh, beefy blade hand. He, uh, he can do some pretty impressive stuff with a motor grader. That is, of course, after you're following Diesel Creek on Instagram. I mean, I can't pl not plug myself here. So if you know much about heavy equipment, you should know that it's pretty important to grease everything. You can really uh, save a lot of wear and tear on your machines by regular greasing. And old Christine over here, she's been sitting, as I said, 10 years with no grease. And that's a long time. Who knows how well they really greased it before then. And road graders have a ton of moving parts and grease fittings all over them. I didn't count them up, but there's dozens of them on this machine. So making life a lot easier we got a dewalt cordless grease gun here and there's going to be a lot of stubborn grease fittings i'll just about guarantee it um so these cordless grease guns got a lot of pressure and you can pop through a lot of those hardened out uh, hard grease fittings they're hard to grease uh if you're from if you've done a lot of greasing you'll know that grease fittings especially ones that don't get hit too often um the grease inside of them will kind of harden up and they'll quit taking grease. You'll sit there and pump and pump and it'll just kind of ooze out all over this thing and not really get any in there. So a uh, company reached out to me and said, hey, you know, want to try out this tool here. And I've seen these before and kind of skeptical of them. So we're going to give this thing a go. Uh, this is from IPA, Innovative Products of America, all made in the USA, which is a big, big thumbs up in my book. But this is a grease joint, grease joint rejuvenator kit. I'm all tongue tied today. And 
Basically what this thing is, is this fancy little contraption. It's got your grease fitting thing on the end here and you squirt some uh, real light oil in there, kind of like penetrating oil, like PB Blaster or you know whatever you got, WD-40. And spray that in there, kind of push this down in there and that seals that oil in there. And then you put that on your grease fitting and then you tap this end with a hammer. And that's supposed to like inject that light oil into the fitting and break up all that hardened grease. So. Like I said, I've seen these for a while. Some people say they work, so I've never had one. We'll give that a go here if we need to. So the bulk of the fittings are here on the uh, the circle and the blade. And we'll see how many fittings I can get before I find one that won't take grease. My faith is not high. Well, first one seems to be a success. Nice. These ones up here are really important. These cylinders will actually sway around. And so the whole thing is kind of like a grease fitting. And if those wear out, it'd be very, very expensive to replace those. Wowzers! It's gonna go through a lot of grease. I'll just about guarantee that. And it sounds like my battery's dying. So we are getting some grease coming out here, but really not enough. That fitting's damaged. It's actually letting the grease come back out the tip there. So you will have to replace some fittings. Dang it! We're on the third one and still taking grease. I'm impressed. Oh, Christine might not be out for me anyway. Hey, that's just about a guarantee. If you pull your grease gun out and start to grease something, pretty much guaranteed you're gonna run out of grease. Every flipping time. That's what we wanna see there. See it pushing out all that old brown nasty grease? That's a good sign. I can't believe these fittings are all taking grease. <laughs> pretty darn impressive. All right, so I found, I think, four or five grease fittings there that didn't want to take grease. So <clears throat> I'm going to try and fill up this thing. I'm not going to fill it all the way up, maybe about halfway. It's a good good use of uh, your cans that are kind of losing pressure or whatever, and you just got to fill them up there. Just kind of dribble her into here for a little while. Give me the old smash. Get your pressure built up. There we go. We got a little over halfway, I think. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yep, that just sprayed a bunch out there. This, this seems like it's going to be messy. Yep, there we go. Got the air out, though. We got the air out. So, let's go... Uh, Let's go put this on the fitting and whack it with a hammer, huh? From what I gather, we just stick this on like a regular old grease gun fitting. Ooh. This thing takes a lot more pressure to click on there than a regular fitting. And I guess we just go ahead and tap it. Yeah, I think it... I'm not certain, but I think it's working. I think I can see the oil coming out the uh, the fitting there. Or not the fitting, but you know where the grease should be oozing out from. I think I can see oil coming out of that. So we'll let that one soak in for a little bit while we do these other ones, and then I'll come back around with the grease gun and see if it'll accept grease. Because I think the whole point is that uh, that oil will kind of soak into the grease and loosen everything up for you. Yeah, look at that. You can see that one work really good. Well, at least I could. I hope you guys can see it. See, it's coming out of this joint up here right now. That's where the grease should be coming out of when you pump it in here. So uh, I'm going to force some more through there, and then we'll let it set and come back to it. Yeah, that one, that one took it real nice. So, I mean, this thing's doing what it's supposed to. We'll see if 
We'll see if that softens the grease up though. And different oils might help uh, more than others, you know. So this, this fitting did accept a little bit of grease, but it definitely had trouble and was uh, frequently bypassing on the gun. So hopefully inject a little bit of blaster in there. Hopefully that helps our cause. All right, it's been uh, 10 minutes or so since we injected our oil into these fittings. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get this thing to accept some grease now. I have the most confidence about this one down here because I saw the oil come out a bit. Oh, look at that. Wow. 100% not making this up, guys. That is awesome. This could be a game changer. Wowzers. I mean, that took it like a brand new fitting. Look at it. It's gooping out of the bottom there. You could see all the PB blasters start running out whenever I started pumping. So hopefully this top one took it as good. Yeah. <laughs> it's taking it. I don't know where it's going, but it's not oozing out. Now that the gun is bypassing a bit here. These DeWalts, they have a pressure relief valve, and that's where it comes out at if it bypasses. So it is hitting the pressure threshold and knocking off, but the fitting is taking it. So that can mean a couple things. That can mean that the grease passages inside of here are so hardened up or clogged that they're going to have to be manually cleaned out, or that we just need to do that a couple more times and let it sit. You know, you could. That, like this fitting here, I mean, th this is a really extreme case. I mean, if it's a machine that you're using a lot, it's not going to have something this hardened in it. But this, God knows how long the grease has been sitting in here without moving and how dried out and hardened it really is. But I, it is taking grease. I mean, it's not all bypassing. It might be coming out on the backside somewhere, too. I haven't even looked. Uh coming out up at the top here a little bit so it appears it's working here's the last one to test here yeah look at that <laughs> this is awesome that's uh that's pretty darn cool full disclosure guys if you ever see me test a product out on here you know, they, they, they sent me that for free. I did not pay for that. I'll tell you that right now. But I'm not going to show it on here if it doesn't actually do what it says it's supposed to do. I've had products before that companies have sent me, and I try them out, and they don't really work too well. And I would say, look, I'll, I'll not put this on there, you know, or you can take it back or whatever, you know, but I'm not going to put that on there unless you want me to. And the companies always say no, <laughs> you know. But if I'm showing it to you, if you're watching this, it, it, this thing's legit. I'm not making this up. All right. Let's, just, let's get this carburetor rebuilt. Made in the USA, guys. Hmm? Maybe it's pretty decent. All right. <laughs> that old... Uh, old flap of rubber that I cut this gasket out of when it was out in the field doesn't seem to like the fuel too well she's bowed up ten different types of ways here it also appears that it's some sort of laminated rubber there's two layers or something because they're like separating here yeah huh. such a one layer would probably be about the right thickness but should be able to toss them Carburetor's still pretty gunky in here. We didn't really get to clean it too good out there because we were afraid to completely disassemble it for fear of not being able to get it back together. Uh, I pretty much had to get it running in the field to be able to get it on the trailer because the blade was sitting in such a way that there was no way to get it on the trailer. It would have been over width and uh, we also never would have been able to get the machine up and over the trailer without lifting the blade all the way up. So. Luckily, we were able to get her going.
all in all, this carb's not too awful bad. I've definitely seen worse. That's the worst of it right there. So get this thing soaking. Start cleaning it up. Okay, I got everything cleaned up as best I can here. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. All these ports on this carburetor are fairly good size, so nothing uh, too hard to get cleaned out. So I'm going to go ahead and start reassembling. Okay, finally got this thing back together. It, uh, <laughs> carburetor is so nice, we build them twice. I took this thing, right, I had it all the way back together just about, and then I realized I found that stupid spring still laying in my parts tray here that had to go all the way at the beginning. So, tore it back down, put the spring in, because, uh, wouldn't work without it. So, let's go bolt this thing on the grater now. All right, it's a new day. Got a rebuilt carburetor tossed on there. About to see if this baby lights off. Contact. Right after looking at uh, removing that fuel tank a little bit more, it's going to be quite a job to get it off of there. So uh, it's kind of a nasty rainy day and uh, I got some room in the building up there. So I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to drive this thing all the way back to the building. Maybe the clutch will free up on the drive there. That would be nice. All right, I got started my way down the driveway here. We're gonna give this thing one last try of breaking the clutch loose before I put it in the garage. And uh, I've got this <laughs> chain hooked up to an elm tree here. And what you wanna do is you're, you're trying to introduce some shock into the drive line to pop that clutch face loose off the flywheel. And so when you take out all the, I'm gonna be holding the clutch down driving. And when, uh, when we reach the end of that chain, hopefully that's the shock load that we need to free that disc up. I hooked it to an elm tree, and as I've stated in the past, elm trees are just a bugger to get out, so I'm not worried about pulling the tree over on myself. Come on, Dick. Well, 
that didn't work. You're making the tree right. Just made her. We that fits like a glove. <laughs> well, there it is, wedged in the old shipping container shop here. Fits like a glove. Yeah, looks good. I'm gonna start ripping into it now. For those of you in the last video telling me I should add air to the tire, I don't. I don't think it's gonna hold. Something tells me that that's probably probably not gonna take air. The old carbonator seems to be doing good. No leaks or anything going on here. I did have to adjust the float because uh, after I put it on there and it ran good, but I started getting a little bit of, there's like a breather up here on top of the carburetor. That hole actually goes straight into the bowl and it started getting a little bit of fuel spurting out there. So I had to pull the bowl back off and just adjust the float a little more, but working good now. We're not losing any gas. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and drain the hydraulic tank because this is a split tank. So you got the fuel tank on the left and hydraulic on the right and it's one unit, you're gonna have to remove it to get that fuel tank side cleaned out good, and it's pretty rough, I'll show you that in a second. We're gonna do that, and while the engine's nice and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and drain this oil. We'll grab a filter from the Napa and slap that back together. All right, you guys see down in there? Oh, goodness. So this is the worst of it, which you can see. You can see there's a bunch of rocks in there, and that rust in the corner pretty bad i'm hoping we're not rusted through into the hydraulic tank that could be problematic and pretty much be the end of this tank but the bottom actually isn't too bad it's just got that old gas in it Damn. You know, on the hydraulic side the tank looks okay but we definitely got some moisture in our fluid so that's concerning pull the oil plug here See what we got. Make sure I don't get squirted with oil. And yeah. Looks pretty good. Kind of thin. But I don't see any bad looking colors in it. Maybe just a hair of moisture. I can see some ripples here. But that could just be from sitting for so long. Maybe some sludge in the bottom of the pan changing our flow around because I'm not I'm not doing anything here. <laughs> I got the top cap off too. Yeah, probably some sludge in there. Why free? I just cracked the nut loose on the hydraulic tank and you can see those droplets of water running down there, so. That tells you about all you need to know. Here you go, Brad. Got my third hand out today. Old B-Rad helping me. Look at the water. Oh. I think I'm going to have a lot. Looks like a town dressing. Shoo, buddy. Yeah, we're missing a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that had hydraulic oil. It's no good. Time to see what the old oil filter looks like here. Maybe. She's pretty well on there. Ah. You know, it probably hasn't been off there in 20 years. Oh. Didn't spill a drop. That's amazing. Had that pan line right up. Phew. 
Oh, check out that vintage filter, huh? That's cool. Yo, purulator. That's awesome. All right, just got back from the old Napa. They actually had the replacement cartridge filter in stock. Who'd have thunk that? I figured we'd be ordering that one, but uh, let's get it installed. The odds that thing came loose. I figured that'd be golden onto that steel line. I'm not complaining though. Leave it any see. Yep. Now, thanks to old He Man Brad over here, my lovely assistant for the day. We uh, got the tank straps off there. They were pretty golden on there, and then the uh, couple hydraulic return lines, pretty pretty on there. We got them all off. So let's uh, lift this tank off and prepare to clean her up. Hold on, we got a return line stuck. Crap. I gotta take this little return line off. Hold on, set her back down. Oh, yeah. oh, this line actually broke loose too. Wowzers. What are the odds of that? That never happens. Christine's really cooperating today. I'll tell you what. She wants to be saved at this point. There we go. I got it if you wanna. All right, so we got the tank out here and uh, getting this fuel sediment bowl loosened up. I got the nut turned in here, so we'll go ahead and drain that out. You can see it looks lovely. Pretty sure fuel's supposed to look like that, right? I added all that stuff out. Oh, that was lovely fuel. Wowzers. That thing's stained. That stuff's cream of the crowd. Oh. That's gonna need some cleaning. Yeah, there might be. Oh, look at the big mouse nest in there, bud. I'm betting that's why our clutches froze up. These mouse bastards. Can you guys see that monstrosity in there? There's a mouse condominium in here. Mouse urine is highly corrosive and uh, really galds things together. I had an engine one time that I thought was locked up, and here it was the uh, mouse condominium in the bell housing that built up behind the flywheel and was actually galding the flywheel to the block, and you couldn't turn that engine for nothing. I'd take the flywheel off and clean it out with a scaler before I could get that engine to turn. But once that flywheel was off, it turned real easy, and I'm betting... That is our issue as far as this clutch being so seized up. Quite a bit by the looks of it. Oh, yeah. This isn't even a condominium. This is like a rat barn dominium. Oh, yeah. The whole bottom side of the bell housing is full. Oh, man. It almost makes me want to pull the motor just to clean this out better because no amount of shop back and it's probably gonna get all this oh, so much in here well after a bit of mental anguish over the situation uh, I don't think there's much hope of me getting that clutch freed up without removing this engine and famous last words it shouldn't be too hard to get the engine out uh, I believe it's just the bell housing bolts and two back here and a little bit of miscellaneous bracketry and this thing should just pop right out of here should um i already have to take the radiator off because the supports for it are rotted off as well as there's a slight leak on it maybe from it shaking around so i gotta pop that off and get it fixed up it'd be good to flush the coolant system anyways um so yeah i guess uh cue the high speed montage of yanking an engine go <laughs>
the inevitable happened. I knew I shouldn't have said this looked like an easy job. Because I was quickly proven wrong by old Christine here. These bell housing bolts, I don't know how they got them in at the factory. Because it's all hidden behind a casting. There's no room for a wrench to even get in there. They didn't leave the recess around the bolt deep enough so you could get a socket over the bolt heads. Uh, without like some special janky wrenches, I don't know how you could even get these things out of here. So, come take a look at these bolts real quick. Now, first of all, to even see these bolts without a camera, you know, just standing here, there's no way you could really see them. So you got to crawl underneath the machine and jam your head somewhere in this area here. And it's one of those places that, like, you got to take your hat off to fit in there. And I'm not talking about a baseball hat. Like, the beanie I was wearing didn't let my head fit in there. So I took that off, wedged my head in there. And do you see those bolts in there? They're impossible to get a wrench on. It's only maybe three quarters of an inch between the head and the casting on the right there. And there's just not space for a socket and a ratchet. And this is all one piece. Like, I don't, I don't know. I can't figure it out. The guys at the Galleon factory must be miracle workers. But... Those three measly bolts have taken enough of my time. I'm done. I'm just going to go home and get the gas axe, and we're just going to cut them right out of there. Once the engine's out, I'll be able to easily pull out the other half of the bolt and uh, put different bolts in there. Okay, can't be tight if it's liquid. That's one, two more to go. And I don't, honestly don't know how the heck I'm gonna get in there to get the other two. George, I think we got it. Woo. Finally, I got all the bolts out. The engine should slide back up out of there now. My goodness, that's been an ordeal. Let's go ahead and get our engine hoist over here. get out of bed some days I mean ridiculous after not starting for months the crane truck started up fairly easy yesterday had it running for uh, probably a couple hours I got it all set up played around with it and stuff made sure everything was good before I swung in here and popped this motor today now today I've been cranking on it for 45 minutes this thing will not run for nothing I've tried dumping fuel right down the throat hole everything nothing so I I mean, it tries to go. I had it really close a couple times, but it just, it ain't having it. So, plan B, we'll have to use my dirty old hoe.
Hopefully I can just come straight out with it now. There we go. Oh yeah, what a mess inside of there, huh? some crud in it. Whew. We got three bolts to pull out of here. Anyway, let's go ahead and set it down. I'll show you more. Well, that's the best news of the day right there. I was able to get this thing slid out accident free, breaking anything free, didn't damage anything I mean. Uh, we can definitely see our clutch pretty well fouled up with the mouse gunk. Uh, it's all inside of here, it's packed in there real tight. I'm betting that uh, it's going to be pretty well galled together in there when we go to tear it apart. There's still plenty of mouse dominium down here in the bottom. And I also noticed that this is a double spline input shaft. And this is a through spline. What this does, this runs clear through the transmission output shaft. This goes into the hydraulic pump on the front of the transmission that runs all the hydraulics on the machine. So even if you push in the clutch, your hydraulics don't stop. These are live hydraulics. So if the engine's turning, you got hydraulic pressure. What that means for us is that it's going to be that much harder to get this thing lined up and slid back in there. So might have to uh, get a helping hand out here for that one. That's going to be a fun, fun one, I bet. Um, what else? Our bearing here doesn't feel awful, but probably going to go ahead and try to replace that while I have this apart. Uh, yeah, so that should be it. Well, with the engine out here now, guys, we are unfortunately out of time. I really wanted to get this thing a little bit further in this video, but due to uh, stupid placement of bolts and uh, everything fighting me, wasn't able to make it happen. That seems to be a theme in all these videos. It's almost like this is real life. Hmm. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. There will be plenty more on old Christine coming here soon. And uh, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so I can see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Later.